I've got yet another one of these infomercials to review. And you guessed it, it's another insurance salesman puffing up these dreaded annuities and life insurance. And I really hope he's selling term life insurance because as I've covered in my videos, whole life and universal life is absolute garbage. So we're gonna listen to actual clips of this infomercial and pick apart some of his shameless straw man arguments, shell games, convenient anecdotes, and statements of opinion, which he uses instead of what really matters most, which would be presenting actual return data from actual annuity contracts, you know, studies comparing these actual products side by side against a traditional low risk, not high risk, low risk allocation of stock and bond index funds over the entire life of the annuity product or until the surrender period expires, if it even allows you to get out. Anything else is disingenuous, deceptive, and meaningless. Okay, if, if you're resigned to earning lowly annuity-like returns, then you would want to compare annuities to this end of the risk return spectrum, not this far right end. But yet this guy's entire radio infomercial that I heard was presented by pretending as if bonds don't even exist. The, the entire show, he keeps coming back to talking about how the stock market alone, all by itself, is so volatile and unpredictable and how you're, if you're 100% invested in stocks, this can ruin your retirement and therefore you need to dump your money into these lowly annuities that he's trying to sell you. Because if you had money at the top of 2000 and you retired somewhere in the, in the end of 1999 or the beginning of 2000, if you retired then, it would have taken you seven plus years, seven years if you never spent a penny out of your retirement account, seven years just to get back to where you were. <laughs> Let's take a look at a chart here. If you have a low tolerance for risk, you invest heavy on the bond side. This is elementary. Look at the green line here. Where is the crazy volatility? It doesn't exist. What I'm saying is you would never take your property tax bill, you would never take your house mortgage, you would never take next month's food bill and put it on red. Why are you doing it in the Wall Street casino? Ah, uh, this guy is trying to put on a show for investors who are ignorant of bonds. When the market corrects uh, and goes backwards, uh, your broker still charges a fee. Wall Street what? doesn't lose anything. Uh, so there he goes with yet another straw man argument. He's assuming that you have to pay an asset manager year after year after year. That's nonsense. You don't pay an asset manager when all you're doing is percentage rebalancing index funds. I said, well, look, we, we focus on safety. Yeah, whenever an advisor says we specialize in safety, this is code for we're insurance salesmen. There is, there is no special skill set that an advisor learns in order to help a conservative senior citizen invest versus a younger person. The approach is the same for all investors. Number one, determine what level of risk is appropriate for that investor. Number two, invest in index funds and then rebalance as needed. And one's appetite for risk is essentially reflected in stock bond allocation ratio. For, for anyone to say that they specifically specialize in helping investors who have less tolerance for risk is a worthless sales gimmick. We focus on fixed index annuities, fixed annuities, life insurance. Yeah, again, translation, you're an insurance salesman. Our job is protection of principle. That's kind of our direction. Kind of your direct, that is your direction, insurance salesman. Kind of our direction reasonable gains. Reasonable is a subjective word. That's a statement of opinion that, that's worthless without comparing annuity returns to bond and stock index funds over time, which I do in my videos like this one. And various studies suggest that when someone buys an annuity, this typically results in a wealth transfer of as much as 15 to 20% from the investor to the insurance companies and sales agents who sell them. That's not reasonable. Reasonable gains and no fees. Uh, hold on a second. 
If there aren't fees, then you're going to indirectly pay the price through things like lower performance caps, lower participation rates, lower payment calculations. There's going to be surrender penalties, etc. You don't have to have fees. There's more than one way to gouge you. The expensiveness of annuities is baked into the product. So to say that there's no fees is a deceptive shell game. Companies pay us from their profits. We're not angels. We're not a nonprofit. You see what he's trying to do there? He's trying to normalize being a middleman in a world where you don't have to have a middleman. When you buy index funds, you don't have these massive insurance company overhead costs, and there's no fat sales agent commission baked into the index fund product because you buy directly through your deep discount brokerage. But the companies are going to make money. And when they do, they pay us from their profit. That's how they survive. And they give you your money. 100% of your money is working for you. <laughs> not really? We don't take any piece of it. Not like a stock bond mutual fund type trader. That's not, we, we have a different business model. <laughs> yeah, okay. When you're 70 years old and the doctors that you go to when you're 70 years old are not the same doctors that you go to when you are seven years old. Okay, right here, he's trying to suggest that with traditional investing, once you reach a certain age, you're supposed to abandon that traditional investing because it, it somehow doesn't work anymore or can't work. That's nonsense. Just because somebody's taken you so far, it doesn't mean their specializa specialization continues. It means they've taken you as far as they could. <laughs> Our goal is to have good memories begin through retirement without the anxiety, without worry. Wait. Again, look at this chart. Where is the anxiety? Where is the worry? It doesn't exist. By the way, I'm, I'm taking uh, clips, bits and pieces out of sequence here, and uh, I actually wanted to back up to near the start of his infomercial when he gave listeners inadequate advice on how to screen advisors. Uh, hey, how do I know if this person is trustworthy? I want you to go to the Department of Insurance website type in his name, and I want you to see what kind of what's called enforcement action. Okay, so checking to see if an advisor has been fined, suspended, barred from the industry, etc. That's a great first step, but this certainly isn't any kind of all-encompassing way of screening an advisor if you need an advisor. Because the most critical thing you need to find out about Mr. Advisor is whether he's a fee-only fiduciary or not. Also, you want to know if you will work on a one-time, one-task, or hourly basis because you don't want to pay someone quarter after quarter, year after year, to be your asset manager. That's a waste of money when, you're, when all you're doing is rebalancing index funds. Look at the enforcement action. It's called enforcement action. It'll tell you if he's been in trouble and, and the particular person I'm, I'm thinking about has been in big trouble. Greg Busted Fox. Busted for five years, suspended from dealing with seniors. Greg Fox. Why? He couldn't be trusted because he forged names, dates, documents. <laughs> and I'm almost certain he's talking about Greg Fox, who I also happen to have a YouTube video review about. But the point is, if you're an investor, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with an insurance salesman who's been suspended and fined and accused of forging signatures or dealing with an insurance salesman who has no enforcement actions because you're still dealing with a friggin' insurance salesman who's trying to sell you annuities instead of a low-cost, tax-efficient, 100% liquid bond index fund strategy to mitigate the, vol the volatile stock index fund part of your portfolio. Getting reasonable rates of return, I don't know, three, four, five, six, something like that, fine. Maybe a little more per year, maybe zero some years. Okay, I, I'm almost certain he's talking about index annuities. And according to Chris Wang of Runnymede Capital, a fee-only fiduciary firm with all index annuities, you can expect, on average, paltry returns of between 1% and 3%. Another fee-only financial advisor, Michael Zwong, I think it's pronounced, he studied six index annuity contracts that were sold by another advisor, and five of them were right in that 1% to 3% range, and one of them even lost 2.4% annualized return on investment. 
So these are CD-like returns. Designing higher income strategies with a conservative approach. Okay, so lastly, there are annuities that will give you a, an initial higher rate of income than you would otherwise get uh, when adhering to the 4% rule or the 5% rule. But as I explain in my videos, including this video, what insurance salesmen don't tell you is that eventually a separate account of stock and bond index funds should much, much more than surpass whatever that annuity is pain. And the older and older you get, heirs will probably wind up getting nothing if you live long enough. So having that initial higher rate of income comes at a price. Anyway, if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section.